Minh Thúy xin kính chào quý vị hôm nay thứ Sáu, 23 tháng 8, 2024. Đến với VATV hôm nay gồm có phỏng vấn đặc biệt và nhạc lá bồ đề. Kính thưa quý vị, trong kỳ phỏng vấn lần này, Minh Thúy mời quý vị xem xét lại những câu hỏi sâu hơn có liên quan tới hồ sơ mật dân sự. Tại sao các nhân viên CIA lúc nào cũng đề cao vấn đề bảo mật? Nếu nhìn vào nguồn máy hoạt động của Mỹ ở Việt Nam ở một mức độ cao hơn, cách CIA giữ riêng những hồ sơ để có những hoạt động riêng phải chăng có hại? Lý do gì khiến họ không muốn chia sẻ các hồ sơ mật với Bộ Ngoại giao Mỹ hoặc là Phái bộ Quân viện Mỹ ở Việt Nam? Họ đã làm gì với khối hồ sơ mật đó? Những tiết lộ của họ ở Phủ Thủ tướng có những tác dụng gì? Nếu cũng được biết, những tin tức trong các hồ sơ mật dân sự, liệu Sứ quán Mỹ, Phái bộ Quân viện Mỹ hoặc là Việt Nam Cộng Hòa có thể hành động khác hay không? Ngoài những việc phải đối phó hoặc là giải quyết những vấn đề khi các cơ quan cần hợp tác với nhau, các cơ quan Mỹ hoạt động ở Việt Nam cũng có những tiếp xúc riêng với các ký giả trong những cuộc khui tinh song phương. Trong đó, các ký giả tìm tới các nguồn tin ở bên trong chính phủ để tìm những tin tức bên trong chính phủ hoặc là quân đội để săn tin, để tìm hiểu những suy nghĩ của các nhân viên Mỹ vào giữa và cuối thập niên 60. Minh Thúy mời quý vị tiếp tục theo dõi câu chuyện về hồ sơ mật dân sự của CIA và tiếp xúc của Frank Scotton với các ký giả Mỹ qua phần 13 phỏng vấn đặc biệt do Phan Lê Dũng, Võ Thành Nhân và Minh Thúy thực hiện. Why was it that it's, uh, I mean, I know that there are different organizations uh, running from different head in, in South, inside South Vietnam. And the CIA is always very uh, suspicious, uh, should I call that? Or is that just their nature to keep the information within the organization instead of sharing it to other agencies? In there, how do, you, how do you feel about their keeping everything to themselves? Well, I, I, under, I understood that. I mean, I was, I was not working within CIA, and, but I, I, I have friends in CIA, and some of the people I worked with on the outside had either CIA experience or maybe even, in the case of Bill Colby, future significant experience. Um, but uh, within within their profession, sources, uh, and it's not just the confidentiality of those sources, but it's protecting those sources from careless disclosure is uh, is really, uh, I think, a very important. Yeah, that's quite and understandable. I think, it becomes, I think it becomes part of the, it becomes part of the, the, the character and nature of a man, and that's why uh, when I would suggest some, not often, but maybe only a, a couple of occasions to Colby that he, that he uh, discuss the corruption files that were maintained in his office with uh, the embassy. And I thought in particular uh, two people that were receptive were uh, because they wanted to know was Bunker, and uh, and then I I thought of uh, another person that uh, Frank knows well, Ambassador Whitehouse. He became an ambassador later. Charlie Whitehouse was, I thought, sensitive to that and very bright, intelligent. Well, and there's no doubt that the Foreign Service would like to know what's going on with the CIA. Uh, my question was over here: Why is, was it so hard to share this information that would prove beneficial to the overall effort? I think it's just I think it's just organ, organizational. I mean, I, um, I I think it's just you might say adult toilet training or you know organizational. Uh, Could there have been a, a better way of the cooperation uh, other than the thing that you've already? Well, I think it need, I think it goes all the way back to Washington. I mean, I think there had to be an understanding of you know what are what are we what. What are we trying to accomplish? What's our what 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 is our best estimate of probable success uh, 
is there probable success? What must be done to do it? Um, and uh, you know, I mean, I was just increasingly convinced that it that it had to involve uh, isolating uh, the north from the south via a line across Laos. Uh, that if that weren't done, then nothing else would, would work. That was my. How important do you judge to have that database? I mean, whether does it matter at all if you do not have those database other than for performance and everything? Did it do a lot? Was the price pay off when you set up that database? Um, I think it could have made it. I think in some instances it made a difference. I think that uh, Comer and then Colby were able to bring about the removal of, uh, of a couple of uh, people. Uh, it could have, it may have had something to do with the shift of Vinlop from Two Core. Um, it may have had something to do with the removal of the uh, corrupt province chief in Bin Din, who made so much money from the air base at Phuket and other things. Um, but uh, it was so closely held. Um, I mean, I, I don't think that uh, uh, I don't think that the embassy in general knew exactly what were in those files. You know. Could the foreign minister? I mean, could the foreign office done anything else with that information if they had? They have had that. Well, the key was the prime ministry. Could the American State Department have yes, done anything yes, different? Yes. I don't think. I don't think so. I think it. I think you had to have somebody there on the ground who was who was committed to the notion of using information, uh, double, triple, quadruple checked uh, to achieve. Uh, ethical performance. How receptive is the government uh, of South Vietnam to you know, when, once when you reveal these a uh, little bit of these database to them and telling them that those are the ones who really incompetent and needed to go? Uh, well, uh, I, was, I was told I never wanted to go to those meetings at the Prime Ministry. I, I, my, my interest was, was, uh, was beyond Saigon. I, I didn't want to do that. But I was told by uh, Jean Savaggio, who for a time had a desk in the Prime Ministry, uh, that when uh, uh, Colby would be there and he would raise the issue of, of competence or malfeasance in office by a, a low-ranking officer, usually district level or below, uh, that the prime ministry would take it seriously and would act pretty quickly. If it's lower level. That's sure, right? Yeah, that's, that was. What I happened? With, what happened when it's higher? The higher up it is, the the more the less influence you have on it. Well, it, again, I I didn't want to be I didn't want to get involved in that sticky flypaper. But I think that uh, at, I think higher level instances accept possibly with respect to General Vinlop and uh, his wife's cousin, I think it's cousin or nephew in Bindin province. I don't think it was ever raised, you know, the new, so. What about on the, uh, you know, on the media side? I haven't asked you any question about the media side. The Vietnamese always complained about the New Yorker and the Washington Post and the Chico Tribune and Christian Monitor is doing a lot of damage to the southern government. Do you think they're complaining was correct? Um, I don't know because I didn't see uh, I didn't see many journalists at, at the time. I mean I knew some of them. Why well, you don't have to know them personally but the media at, at large if you could look at it did it do more damage or it was helping to have the media in there? Well I think in the beginning the, the those few that I met in the period 63, 64, I think, were generally supportive of the, of, of the U.S. Uh, 
assisting South Vietnam. I, I think that somewhere in the next few years, uh, the tide changed, the tide shifted. And uh, I, I think there's a certain degree of self-interest there that, you know, journalists will write uh, what, people write books they think will be published. People make movies that they think will make money. Mm. Uh, some journalists wrote stories that they thought would get printed. Not everything that a journalist submitted would be printed. So I think there was some of that, but I, I didn't have much, uh, I didn't have any responsibility for it. Mm. How, how do you feel personally, though? Uh, I say the Second Republic, because I think the first one, there's virtually almost no media except the government, and all of the journalists was kind of expelled. At least that's the view that David Halberstam was writing about. Well, some were expelled, but uh, you know, some seemed to some seemed to do all right. Uh, I thought uh, when he was expelled, in fact, I thought Francois Sully of Newsweek yes. was mm. was fairly well informed. But he he was expelled, and then subsequently he was killed in the helicopter accident with Joe Cautry. Um, I I must say I did not know many uh, many many journalists. Journalists, yeah. I mean, I did meet some occasionally, but. Mời quý vị đón xem phần 14 phỏng vấn ông Frank Scotton, nhân viên cao cấp Sở Ngoại vụ Hoa Kỳ, sẽ được phát hình vào tối thứ Sáu ngày 30 tháng 8, 2024. Kính thưa quý vị, chương trình VATV đến đây xin tạm ngừng. Chúng tôi sẽ tiếp tục phần 2 sau phần thông báo và quảng cáo.